Günaydın, hepiniz hoş geldiniz. So my part will be in Turkish. Everybody told you that, right? <laughs> Not so much, no. So it's great to be with you this beautiful morning in Costa Rica. And when I was invited to come speak with you, I thought that, you know, this is all about women leadership, so I will speak to you about women empowerment, right? And then I put women empowerment in the TEDx talk search, and within less than 30 seconds, I got 95,000 hits. So I said, maybe that subject is covered, right? And then I started obsessing. So what am I going to talk to you about that can be unique, that will not be a waste of our times together here, and maybe that can have the chance of leaving a couple of thoughts with you. So after obsessing for a couple of weeks, driving my family crazy, I said, well, the only thing that I can be sure that nobody else will talk to you about is my own story. I was born in Izmir. It's a small town in, in the Mediterranean in Turkey. And uh, it's a beautiful place. We are big families, much like you guys. Uh, you know, lots of uncles, aunts, cousins, what have you. The culture at the time when I was growing up was quite male dominant in Turkey and in Izmir. Boys were raised to be the ambassadors of the family, right? With high expectations. They had to make the family proud. I, on the other hand, was the youngest of all, and I was a girl. So you can imagine, there was zero expectation from me. It's very liberating, actually. It was lucky. And uh, so I, I, I didn't, I wasn't brought up thinking what I can do this or I can do that. I was free to do anything. I could be anything. I could do anything I want. So my first learning in life and the first thought that I want to leave with you is do not measure yourself with somebody else's ruler. That's the saying in Turkish. That means clearly that do not let others define what you can or cannot do. Do not let others define your limits. I've been reading recently Harry Potter with my son, and I came across a very nice quotation there where the headmaster tells Harry, Harry, it's not our capabilities, but our choices that define us. Isn't it beautiful? This is why I think it is critical that we start our story by defining what we want to stand for first. So I will ask you, what do you want to stand for? What do you want your story to be? Today I know, after many years of thinking about it, today I know that I want to stand for respect, for positive energy, and for progress. This is my leadership philosophy. So let's start with positive energy. I was quite a restless kid to begin with, very hot-tempered, not an easy child for my mom or my parents. But the peak was uh, when I lost my father, when I was 11. I really, really got mad. Got mad at the world and everything in it and everyone in it. So one day I was walking at school. I think I was sixth grade. And um, I was again angry to whatever. And uh, I kicked my locker door. I can still remember it. The locker door flew and then came down into my foot corner first. Oh man, it was such a pain. And then I said, okay, this is not going to work. Anger is not going to be good for me or anybody around me. Another saying in, in Turkey is, um, God doesn't have a stick, right? So it tells you what you can or what you need to know through things that happen to you. And uh, this is clearly my, my stick, right, was in the form of a locker door. So I said, okay, the message is loud and clear. I have to be more positive than this. Well, I am a pessimist by birth, as I explained, but an optimist by choice. So I started working and studying positive energy. You know, being positive every day is not that easy. Because, you know, things happen, little annoying things. You know, you, there's traffic, you burn dinner, there's nothing else in the fridge, you know. You, the nanny is late, you miss your plane. All sorts of stuff happen to you every day, testing you. So you need to know how you re-energize yourself. So the thought that I want to leave with you is, please figure out where you get your energy from. 
Mine generally comes from people, positive people, and in specifics from my family and my son. So between the three of us, my husband, my son, and I, and now actually between the 200 of us here, his nickname is Shiny. It's because when he smiles, his eyes shine, right? And he smiles all the time. So I would ask you, who or what is your Shiny? And that's him smiling back there. Respect. My definition of respect is listening and being open to different perspectives, different ideas. So I'd started my career doing what I knew what to do, right? I was a marketeer, I started as a marketing expert, and then grew through the ranks leading marketing departments in various companies. So I thought I knew it all, right? I was the expert in this, and listening to my team was optional. If we had time, we would. If not, I would just tell them. Well, what a big mistake. I figured that out when I moved from sales, uh, from marketing to sales, and I was supposed to lead a sales department. I remember the first day. I stood up in front of my team, and I realized I had no idea what they were doing. Right? So I said, all right, how are we going to tackle this one? And I started listening. Right? I realized that the best I could do was to listen to everyone in my team and really listen, making sure that I understand what they were telling me. So for me, the most important sign of respect is listening. But there's a downside to really listening. If you have people around you from the same perspective, same background, same cultures, they pretty much say the same thing, right? You say one thing, and the second, the third. By the fourth, I'm terribly bored, right? So my definition of respect is I need to listen, and then I need to listen to you very carefully, right? So I quickly realized that I need to have diversity of thought around my table, because only then it is actually interesting to listen to each and every one person, and only then actually magic happens. So the third thought that I want to leave with you is, please invite diversity of thought around your table and listen very carefully. And it will be fun, and you will see that great things happen and progress will happen. That brings us to the third pillar of my leadership philosophy, progress. So since this is about leadership and business, I define Progress in business as grow your business, grow your teams, grow yourself. The first two are well-versed, right? If, if you Google it on TEDx, I'm sure you will have millions of finds uh, in a second. The third one, grow yourself, is a little bit trickier, though, right? Because we are, what, 250 people here? It's 250 different ways of growing yourself. Everybody has a unique talent, a perspective, something they can contribute to the team. So it is very important, in my opinion, to know what that uniqueness is for you. That special kind of way you can add value to the business or the team. That builds confidence, and you will need confidence. So after working at the company that I work for now for a couple of years, I had an opportunity to move to the U.S. It was great, actually, timing. The business in Turkey was doing well. The team had settled. My husband had his work arranged so that he could be mobile. My son's still very young, so we were all good to go. Well planned, you would think, right? Not so much. Because when we said yes to the job, we realized that, I, in fact, my husband was sick. And he had to go through multiple operations. I remember one night, in November night, I landed in, uh, in the U.S., in Nina, Wisconsin, and I realized that I was all alone, 10,000 miles from home, my family suffering back, and I said, all right. I called my husband and I said, do you really want to do this now? We can always do it. And he said, you know what, let's give it a try. If not, we'll go back. It's that simple. We could have postponed the job, postponed my executive MBA, postponed everything we were doing, but in instead we thought we will give it a try. 
So the last thought that I want to leave with you is thinking you can plan or control life is an illusion. Life throws at you possibilities and it's up to you to turn them into opportunities. So please, have the confidence in yourself, trust yourself, and do take a chance. These thoughts I shared with you are for everyone. It's not specific to women or men. Whoever you are, I sincerely believe that first, to inspire others, you, you need to know what you want to stand for. Find your own story and then find your unique way of adding value. Be positive, respect others, and please, trust yourself and take a chance. Thank you.